<laughs> Welcome, my young apprentice. It's time to explore everything pop culture and everything science fiction and everything beyond the multiverse. Good. Good. It's time to sharpen those lightsabers. Do it. It's time to shampoo your tauntaun. Do it. It's time to put a spit shine on your dark crystal. Do it. So pull up your favorite bean bag, remove those tendies from the air fryer because this is PopX Cast. <laughs> Excelsior, and welcome to PopX Cast, episode 124 for June 13th, 2021. What is up, Team PopX? How in tarnation are you doing? Hey, Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you guys tonight. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude, I got to tell you, I got to stop for a second. I Talk Marvel is literally, he was the first in the chat. He was getting the chat amped up. I think I I seriously think he had a triple shot of espresso before he came in here tonight. I think he comes in early to save seats. He like puts a a hat here, a jacket over there. He wants to make sure he has enough seats for all of a tesseract here. Yeah, you know, a time stone (laughs) there. Just a kind of yeah, yeah. Get you, yeah. Yeah. Some katana blades going on. I like that. Well, I talk Marvel. We see what you do, man. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And the chat room is hopping right now. Before we even got off to the start, it's crazy. We got Deborah Watson from San what's Diego up, tuning in right now. I talk Marvel. We love you. Lucia, what's up from the HAPS team, official HAPS.TV uh, social media team. It's good to have you here, Lucia. Very cool. And a, a host of others, John Poffenbarger. Okay, hello, buddy. Yeah. How you doing, OG. man? OG yeah. in the hizzle. Luke McCracken all the way up from Canada. Regions and parts unknown up there in the big north country. Good to have you on board tonight. Guys, this is going to be a fun one. We get to literally sit here for about 25, 30 minutes and just talk Loki, and I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> you, you know whenever it comes to Marvel, yeah. we can we can talk for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. We can unpack it. You know, between the three of us, I think seriously, we could probably talk for like eight hours straight and just BS our way through a bunch of like crazy stuff from the Marvel world. And no, it, we're not talking about like WandaVision. Remember how WandaVision got crazy and off the tangent, and off the sides, and everybody's oh, yeah. like, it's who who was the big villain? What's Everybody's wanted to say, it's my fist out. It's my fist. No, it's Everyone's not. Everyone's my fist out. I get that after all. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Oh my gosh. So Austin Burke, I want to give you a huge congrats, man. You are almost at ninety thousand on YouTube, dude. We have almost been we there. have been cheering you on so in your on section, dude. I'm so proud of you. What you're doing. You're kicking some Thank butt, you, bro. You're kicking some butt. Thank you. How's the moving process going? 
Well, it's going. We're, we're, as you can see, we're saving the YouTube studio for last. So we have to be out of the apartment by June 30th. Okay. So maybe by the time our next show rolls around, you'll be seeing me in a, in a new location in my okay. new studio. So nice. um, work in progress. Nice. Yeah. Look at that. June 27th, we could be seeing some new digs for the Burke and Nader. You. I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh my gosh. So uh, anyway, Lindsay, what's new in your world? How's things, you have been like doing creative stuff like a boss. Oh lately. my gosh. Uh, I decided to take on a new art challenge this month called June Dune. So I have been drawing every single day without May 6. missing a beat. Yeah. Joe is joining along. A, co a couple of buddies over on HAPS is also playing along too. Thanks to all of yeah. the lovely supportive community over there. We've really been having a good time bonding over this challenge. It's been pretty fun to, to be a part of that and seeing everybody's process. And so again, yeah, shout out to our, our friends over at HAPS. Uh, but uh, let's get this show kicked off here, guys, let's shall we? Let's, let's roll in. Let's get it done. Austin Burke, lead us off. I am ready. Hey, guys, welcome to Pop X, where science fiction meets pop culture. I'm Austin Burke, the Appalachian geek at heart. We'd like to welcome everyone joining us live in the PopX.live chat room. Come hang out with us and join the conversation at PopXCast.com. If this is your first time tuning into Pop X, the first 15 minutes or so, or so, we run down the headlines since our last show, and then we deep dive into all things nostalgic on retro, rewind, and let me tell you, today's <laughs> packs a punch. You see what I did there? Oh. Uh, at the halfway point, <laughs> I, I follow that up. I, 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 um, then we I, will inevitably hit on the show's topic. So you don't have to run away right now if you haven't seen Loki. But eventually, we're going to dive into spoilers. Get ready for that. I bow to your nerdiness, Austin Sun. It's a packs a punch. Austin Sun. I'm done. Austin I give up. You, 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 what you I retire. Do. You're so special. <laughs> Daddy's little Jim. Anyway, I'm oh, Joseph boy. Burke, Central Florida. Oh, <laughs> Central Florida. No, I mean, no just you stop it. Stop it. Ah. I am Joseph Burke, Central Florida season comic book nerd and a retro enthusiast. Now, I want to let you guys know a little something that we're doing. Lindsay and myself um, and a host of many other creatives in our weekly live streams, the Creative Multiverse has landed officially on Haps.tv. Now, if you don't know what Haps.tv is, it's a brand new platform that is allowing people like ourselves, creatives, to come together in community and just do what we love to do, and that is create. It's pretty awesome what we're doing, and I want to let you guys know it's 100% free to join. They're not sponsoring us by any way. We're just giving them no. a shout out because we, we love them. We just love them a lot. But there's a, reason, there's, there's a reason why I'm doing this. Immediately after tonight's show, you can join Lindsay and myself on the Creative Multiverse at 11 oh. p.m. Eastern. If you, This is the after show of Pop X. The official after show of Pop X. So if you want to come hang with us on camera, talk to us, watch us create, and do some fun stuff, we will post that link before the end of tonight's show in the chat. You guys can join, and we would love to have you there. And uh, join the Creative Multiverse and see what we do when we're not on camera at Pop X. That's cool. It's a lot of fun. That's all I got to say about that. It's a lot of fun. I'll post you that link later. Play. I swear. All I'm right, post well, it. Um, I'm Lindsay Badger, the favorite geeky yoki, at least here around these parts they are. I am anyways. So um, <laughs> if you guys missed our last episode, number 123, 123, 123, guys. I see what, that's what you right. did there. 123, we covered MODOK, the series over on Hulu, and we retro rewinded top gun so that was a lot of fun uh make sure you go over to our official website at popxcast.com to watch that replay and all of the other great replays from our past shows of the collective pop X <laughs> archive uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. also if you like what you're seeing here tonight please do us a favor and slam that thumbs up button the like button and throw a little subscribe towards our way over here on the youtubes um, uh, we schedule new shows, and, and as soon as we do it, you'll know all about it if you turn on that notification bell. Mm. So um, you need to get all up on that because you know you want more Pop X goodness, right? Get all up so, on it, man. Yeah, on it. get all up on it. Know it. it. Also, if you are visiting us in the podcast format, make sure to please go give us a five star review and mm -hmm. rating Indeed. and all the love because you know you like the geeky goodness just like we do right so uh yeah <laughs> go show us some love uh, that's he, all i got he's broken let's go into the news he's broken i think i think austin's in westview right now slap a high five maybe that'll help can you toss a coin to your witcher 
Toss the coin into your wish. Do you need your binky? <laughs> <laughs> oh I couldn't hold it after that. That was it. That's, You're welcome. That's all. I figured that would get you. It does every time. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. Pop X News is coming your way right now. <laughs> extra, extra. Read all about it. This is Pop X News coming to you live right here on popxcast.com. All right, Austin Burke, you have the honor, Sensei. Oh, 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 little little Indiana Jones action off the bat. So filming is underway on the highly anticipated Indiana Jones 5 movie, and a number of photos from the set have already started to pop up online. Images of Harrison Ford have previously appeared, and now another has arrived that offers a hint at the villainy he's facing. First noticed in the video full of images, and the contents shouldn't surprise fans of the series, as yes, Nazis will play a part in the <laughs> film. Are dang one, Nazis. It's Nazis. One thing that is perhaps Nazis. worth noting is that many have theorized that the film's opening will be a flashback sequence to the 1930s or 40s. Uh, photos of Ford on set with dots on his face, oh yes, have prompted speculation that he's being digitally de-aged. de-aged. Gotta, yes. Wow. For this film, uh, at least part of the movie. Now, it would perhaps make sense for the new film to open with a flashback scene, something it previously did in 1989's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Love that movie, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, when a young River Phoenix played mm, a young Henry Jones Jr. to a point when the Nazis were an active group perhaps setting up their return in the larger narrative. So, Joe, what do you think about this? I think it's going to be great. I, I, I feel that Indy 5 could right all the wrongs that Indy 4 did not kind of um, oh, uh, capitalize on, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, give a lot of respect to Lucasfilm and the Indy franchise here. I'm trying to be... Indy 4 was a little bit of a stinker in terms of, of that. I mean, Harrison Ford, of course, is Indy all day long, but it was a little wonky on the storyline, um, but yeah. uh, it doesn't leave it at that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I am excited for Indy 5. I hope they go back to the roots of just like how Indy conquers and, and overcomes and outsmarts and outwits the Nazi regime and, you know, yeah. just how he infiltrates their little world. And I go back to when him and Sean Connery were in the scene of the burning house and they're strapped together back to back and the house is burning down. It's just so, Junior, what? Junior, yeah. what? Junior. It's just, that it. is what I'm hoping to get to see in this film i'm hoping to see some of that not on a comedic banter but indy and harrison just owning those roles together i just think Mm. it's going to be great i want to see that i don't want to see all the science fiction and the nuance just tell the story you know you you look at the previous three films in the franchise up before four they were very there the objects in which they chased were very real and very tangible you know what I'm saying? A crystal skull with a, with a UFO is a little weird. Mm-hmm. And then you got Shia LaBeouf, which is a whole new level of weird. But um, <laughs> having said that, I just hope they keep the main thing, the main thing, and let Harrison do what Harrison yeah. does best. I, I think it's Harrison's turn to take a trip into the uh, Fountain of Youth machine. Uh, we've had Leia be de-aged. We've yep. had mm-hmm. Luke be yep. de-aged and now it's time for han except he's indie this time so <laughs> it's gonna be it'll yep. be all right i just hope that they don't overuse it yeah because that's where it starts getting weird yeah as long you as s- if they do it in the right way it can really be a great selling point yeah if it's list. done if it's done in a minute way that's not like half the movie with de aged I, I have faith that uh lucas films is well you know yeah. ilm will do a, a good job with it i'm sure so yeah. what, what are your thoughts in it, uh, House? And how do you feel about Indy 5? I, you know, for me, it's James Mangold. That's the name, the director from Logan, most recently Ford v. Ferrari, coming in and, you know, taking over for Spielberg. That's a big job. But if anyone's going to do it, and look what he did for Logan in his last movie. Um, maybe apply a similar independent budgeted feel to Indiana Jones, but also yeah. keeping what makes us love it with Action and Adventure Man. He's a phenomenal director, so that is what has me excited. James Mangold. Do you feel like this is going to be like the wrap-up movie, or are we going to get like an Indy 15? I, I think it I think it will wrap it up. If it does anything, I think it sets us up for spinoffs because you know they have that property and you know Disney's gonna want to use it. So I, I think it for it everything it's up for yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Might as well. You know, people yeah. will buy it. So there you go. Yeah, they will. 
<laughs> yes, I will. All right, Lindsay Badger, what do you got? All right, for us? well, uh, talking about things not getting spinoffs, uh, less than a month after the series yeah. premiered, Netflix revealed that it is scrapping plans for a second Man. season of Jupiter's Legacy mm -hmm. and abandoning the Mark Miller based project for a different plan. Rather than continuing the story that ended on a cliffhanger, Netflix will take another Miller creation, Super Crooks, and turn it into the second season, effectively making Jupiter's Legacy an anthology show based on mm -hmm. various Miller-themed properties. Interesting turn. Um, after this sudden change slash cancellation was announced, many assumed that the series was canceled because of the viewership, but it's apparently a much bigger deal than that. The show yeah. went through a major change as the original showrunner, Stephen DeKnight, was replaced by executive producer Sang Kyu Kim. Uh, according to the outlet, DeKnight and Netflix clashed on the budget for the show. After the change in the regime, both Jupiter's legacy and Netflix itself, the series found itself in an extensive post-production timeline with Dark Crystal and Lupin director Louis Lettier. <laughs> <laughs> and brought in, and brought him in as a consultant however ahead of its pause in production the long post production the series reportedly had a 130 dollar or 130 million dollar budget which ballooned to 200 million by the end so uh somebody did some overspending somebody Oopsies. somebody broke the bank on that end Oopsies. um yeah i mean you know dark crystal i mean that got canceled as well i'm, I'm yeah. kind of sad by that because oh. i I truly enjoyed the first season. I thought it was just a beautiful, my gosh, Come what back. they were able to do with puppetry and visuals was yeah. just stunning. Come and back. it's sad. I know that, I know it's a lot. It's one of those type of productions that is very cumbersome, very painstaking to get the scenes, the sets, the puppets, and the puppeteers. Right. It's not easy to film something in that perspective. I, I get that. But right. um, very sad to see that go. And getting well, back and to I, Jupiter's I, Legacy. I, I, Go ahead. I know here uh, here on PopX, we kind of had mixed reviews and feelings about mm -hmm. the, the Jupiter's Legacy series, and yeah. most of it had to do with the actual storytelling line. It wasn't actually the the characters themselves or anything like that. Um, yeah. So I think it's interesting that they're kind of taking a different angle and attacking and featuring other I, stuff that Miller has. I really wish that they would have just let allowed a some room for the season and the story and the characters to expand further yeah. yeah we never got that i mean it did leave on a cliffhanger and we don't know what happened and i i feel that to truly give a series of that caliber justice i mean there was some great production involved in that so in that show oh yeah and definitely it, some good stuff. i feel that season two could have probably taken what didn't work in one and just catapulted it to to new levels and heights. But, you know, they didn't do that. they just like, you know what, we're just going to create a spinoff show, and it's going to be an anthology of the original season. I, I'm so mixed on that. And we, you know, we, I think, believe around the 6.5, 6.8 was like the overall Pop X rating, which is mm -hmm. not bad. It's mm -hmm. not bad. I mean, we've rated stuff on this show that's a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And um, I just felt it didn't. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what Netflix thinks. It just didn't land, thinks. I think, the way they wanted it to. It land with an audience. The show has an audience. It does. And uh, it, it, was, it was like number one for a solid week on Netflix. That means yeah. a lot of views. A lot of people have to watch it to own that number one slot on the top ten list. Um, so I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about it, too. I wanted to see where it went. Well, and it's a bummer, too, because a lot of my favorite shows, and not that this would have been one of my favorites, but a lot of them have either lackluster or first seasons that maybe aren't the quality of later seasons. And right. I thought Jupiter's Legacy could only, I mean, if they would have learned from their mistakes, um, clearly money-wise they weren't, yeah. but if they would have learned from their mistakes, then it could have been a little bit better in the second season, but right. now we'll never get to know. We'll I, I, know. I will say, though, the production you know, was really good. The special effects, though, that doesn't scream $200 million dollars. It, of that show. No, it's, so, it screams CW Flash series. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what happened? There? Where'd that money I, go? I, dude, I, I don't know. I mean, was it was it the, was it the, <laughs> the price of the <laughs> actors? Like Josh Duhamel and stuff? Was it getting Maybe. them guys on board? Yeah. Because he's he's pretty much one of the biggest heavy I'm hitting I'm going to blame actors. it on the couches. We lose a lot of change in the couches. We do. <laughs> There's probably <laughs> a lot of couches. And they get, to, they get our butt a lot, too, so there is that. All right, so moving along here, uh, we PlayStation boss Jim Ryan has recently commented 
on the continuing situation with Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. And its removal from the PlayStation Store. You remember reported on that two months ago. Well, which is something that transpired last December. Yep, remember, we've commented on that. Uh, for roughly six months at this point, PlayStation 4 and 5 players haven't been able to digitally purchase Cyberpunk 2077. Now, it might seem like at a time, there, there will come a time where the game will be added once again. Ryan hasn't said what it will take place or the title return or to the marketplace when what where who whatever but ryan explained that playstation moved to remove the newly released rpg from its platform because it felt like it would be a way of protecting its audience i'm not sure what that Uh means uh so he, he went on to say in quote this was a tough decision for us to make but ultimately we had to act in the interests of the PlayStation community and not knowingly sell a game that might result in a bad experience for them. Okay, I get that. I get that. Quality the problem, control. The Fair problem, yeah, quality control. They're backpedaling. I understand that. But here's the problem. They released a game that was only like 65, 70% completed. It was buggy. People that bought it, they, they bought the deluxe editions. They spent upwards of 115 to $125 on these deluxe sets. And the game, they couldn't even load the game. Um, it was it was very buggy. It was crazy, and, and it was just very faulty from the get go. No one, PlayStation is not to blame for that. Uh, that would be definitely the directors and creators of the video game franchise itself. Um, I think it is a this is a debacle of a video game. I believe that Cyberpunk 2077 was meant to be the last big release on the PlayStation before. It was the last big title to launch on the PS4 and before the PS5 mm-hmm. truly came into power. And um, I, I believe that that I believe the ship sailed, man. I believe it's, t- it's time to move on. Um, you probably will see 2077 on discount in the PlayStation 5 band for 19.99 this coming holiday season, and that's probably going to be about it, pretty much. But th- you don't have to take my word for it. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you well, know. well, just to just to comment on that though, we talk about a lot of money being wasted. I wish we could put a number to this. Just just see, Dude. not only money but resources. Man, it wasn't I mean Keanu? Uh, this was Dude, this a game, huge. This game yeah. was five years in the making. <laughs> yeah, that's that hurts my this my game, artistic and creative soul. I'm seeing like, that go what to waste. are you doing? Eating popcorn and picking your nose? Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I, what I have seen of it, it is pretty. It is very yeah. pretty. It's 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 <laughs> got a nice synth wave vibe to it. It looks oh. futuristic. Mm-hmm. From what I've seen, it looks really cool. I mean, it's obviously very adult, but it looks uh, really really me, cool. I'll just I just say wish this. it worked right. I'll say this to all the pop Xers: if you want to enjoy Cyberpunk 2077, go watch the trailer and then move on with the rest of your life. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's all I got to say about that. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, Officer Burke, you're ending up this week's headlines. All right, let's uh, let's talk about Aquaman. So let's James Wan is now trending thanks to all of the Aquaman fans on Twitter. He revealed the title for the second movie. It is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Where did it go? We don't know. Uh, DC <laughs> wow. Comics fans knew We're gonna the title. It. <laughs> Hello. Where is it at? Had Kingdom. to be coming at some point. <laughs> so we're nearing most of their huge projects um, from 2022 being, oh my God, a year away. Jason wow. Momoa uh, is more than ready for a dive into the water after yes. that uh, filming <laughs> Dune. Dive into the water. <laughs> Dune is... Oh. Type into the <laughs> oh my God. just read. I didn't realize what I said. But hey, Dune, that's that's my most anticipated movie. Yeah, okay, yeah, so man. that's the one I'm looking forward to. Uh, but both of these films are pretty highly anticipated by the fan bases. We're still a while away from Aquaman 2. One was adamant that his film and others like it would make it to theaters. Uh, in some comments to the LA Times, the director drew a line in the sand for what would and wouldn't be happening when the next sand. movie hit theaters mm. what's gonna happen in the lost kingdom i, I don't know man I, there's so I'm many take possibilities a stab at it and there's probably gonna be swimming and then fish yeah and, and then and then willem moist. willem dafoe with those amazing jowls of his yeah yeah and he's gonna scream avenge me and, and he's, he's gonna, gonna say beat a vodka <laughs> Oh. I'm just ready for some washboard abs and some gorgeous. Oh my gosh! Never mind. So, hey, no. what's up, Michelle Alexander in the house? What is <laughs> going it going, on? Guys? That's so good to have her. We got some Haps people hanging here with us. That's oh, so cool. Man. But back to Aquaman, uh, the Lost Kingdom. Um, man, uh, 
I don't know what that could be referring to. I mean, could they? It has to be a kingdom on Earth, right? It couldn't be Themyscira, I and it can't I be Atlantis. Assume. Atlantis is existing. Yeah. So they're kind of against humans in general. So it could be. just... What is the actor movie. that was in um, the the Conjuring um, that plays one of the um, the, mm. the guy that played the villain in the first Aquaman? Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson. Yes. I, uh, there were scenes of him. I think I saw online of him like getting ready to reprise his role. So I think he's coming back. Yes. But I don't know to what extent and what capacity. But this will be. And I and I heard the actor who's playing Black Mantis coming back. So it looks like they're bringing back literally everyone from the first film. But who's the new player? Like where is this Lost Kingdom? That's interesting. Interesting. We'll yeah. find out. That is. Uh, Stay tuned. I can't wait. Aquaman two. I just can't wait to see Momoa get all in the water again. I, I that, that's really what I'm buying my ticket for. I'm just gonna. I might buy right two there. tickets. And I'm gonna hide my wife's eyes as he's doing it. Don't look, mm -hmm. honey. He's just a big dude that's got a lot of muscles. You don't need to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, moving on. Flexy as us, though. Flex. Who's out there ready for some retro rewind? Yeah. Let's do this. Can I, yes. can I, get, can I get a what? A, a what? A what? A what? What? Karate what? Kid. Here we go. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Retro rewind starts now. <laughs> It's so good, dude. Sand, sand the floor. <laughs> uh, so good. So this movie, oh my gosh. I, I had the honor uh, late last night to, I watched this earlier in the week. Of course, I've seen this movie probably 20 sometimes in my, in my entire lifespan of Joe on this E-Arth. And uh, so it's, <laughs> you liked that, didn't you? The oh, E-Arth, you like that? Yeah. Oh, okay, you know, we're just moving along here. Sorry. Just a little Easy nerd. Amused. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, it's a nerd nugget. Uh, so oh this movie brings a lot of joy to me. And I connected with this movie, especially as a child, because I'll, I'll share this with you and I want to move on to Austin and Lindsay. But I was a kid that was in school that I was very, I was bullied. I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to dance around it. I was bullied. And so much like Daniel LaRusso, uh, uh, you know, Ralph's character that he plays here in The Karate Kid, it, it, I just resonated because he, it, the, the entire movie he's bullied for something, you know, that's literally not his fault. He's 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 literally transplanted from his hometown in Jersey. He's his mom plopped him up, picked him, and took him on the road to Pasadena, and here he is in the valley, and and he's trying to pick up the pieces. He has no, you know, his father's not in the picture, and he has no father figure. He has no mentor. And every time he tries to do something or talk to somebody at school, he's always bullied, and this 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 gang will not relent on him at all. And it, it, for me, growing up in that environment and watching this, there's so many times I can just close my eyes and I just resonated with, with Daniel. I wanted to be Daniel. I wanted to have the physical strength of Daniel, and I wanted to be able to overcome my adversaries in the way that Daniel did. And so it's a very empowering movie on a, on a lot of level, different levels. I didn't mean to bring the mood down, but I'm just, you know, this movie is a deep one for me. It, this is definitely in my top five of the deep movies of the 80s for me that really just kind of like connects with Joe. And um, I, I have nothing bad to say about this film from start to finish. It is uh, literally an epic piece of 80s masterpiece. Just, oh gosh, it's it's cinematic glory for me. And... I do want to go to the critic. I want to see what the critic has to say about this. Yeah, I, you know, it, it wasn't uh, a movie that... So here's kind of where I was going into Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai got me way more excited about this franchise because it gave me the opportunity to go back and revisit this franchise and really see, like, the glory that comes from it. And most of it spawns from this first film. Mm -hmm. So... While it wasn't one that I went back to all the time growing up, it was one that I was very aware of. And every time I would watch it, I would really enjoy it. Um, and watching it earlier today, actually, you know, just a, about an hour ago, finishing it, um, I was really able to, now that I have Cobra Kai to work off of and we see where these characters end up, I was really able to appreciate kind of the origins of our characters and 
everything about this style works mm. so well and just the simplicity you know moving to a new area going in we're making new friends there's a little bit of love interest going on there and then you know i didn't really remember how big of a jerk johnny was and that crew and oh my good because now you know we see cobra kai and we're like very different characters very different arcs but yeah. before man so you're really really on board with Daniel at the beginning of this movie. And when we get to those training sequences and we first see Mr. Miyagi take everybody out by that fence and we're like, whoa, who is this guy? And then the culmination of all of that with the final battle, this movie has one of the coolest character arcs, I believe, of the 80s. And it is the ultimate, Joe, you said it best, the ultimate like overcoming, bullying story. I think probably of that decade yeah right because this kid went from and, and you know he knew karate but he went from zero to hero so quick but he had it in him the entire time he right did. he was never really a zero and that's what i love mr miyagi was just able to bring this out of him so that's what i love about this story man and this movie rocked my world revisiting it i, I loved it. it it rocked my world too and you know I, i'm glad you said that it, it is definitely the over the zero to hero Mm -hmm. And there's so many times, dude, I wanted... See, here's the thing about my story, and I should have probably mentioned this before. Then I want Lindsay to just open up and just mm -hmm. open that can of worms. But I didn't have the physical strength because I was born with a disability. Yeah. So that's what I meant by I wanted to be Daniel, but I couldn't yeah. be. See, mm -hmm. I didn't have that physical strength, but I learned something along the way. I learned that the, my biggest strength and my biz biggest muscle that I have is my mind. And when you're able to, to do things intellectually... And I don't want to say outsmart and out, outwit the jocks that made my life a hell. But when I was able to do things that just kind of like put the little, you know, I on yeah. dot, to, on dot the I and cross the T and just like, I gotcha. Uh, yeah. You know, that to me intellectually, it was just like, you know, I understood my place very quickly. Like, yeah, I know what I can do here in this situation. And, and, and they're not going to come at me and they're going to look like, yes. So, uh, but I wanted to just mention that really quickly. All right. So Lindsay Badger, the karate kid. Man, you guys like unpacked almost everything about this. There's not <laughs> much left to well, say. Well, you're the female um, perspective though, well, too. Well, um, I will say I, I grew up a pretty normal childhood, not a ton of bullying for me to experience personally, but, um, I, I do agree with, with Austin watching this again, fresh on the mind while I was watching it today, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact. Um, I was constantly remembering and refresh, re-referencing the Cobra Kai series and be like, that's why he likes cars. And that's why they do this. And that's why they do this. And it's so great how they are pulling so many details from the original source mm -hmm. in, in elaborating yeah. on that, making it grow into something a little bit bigger than what it started out to be. Um, and, and with all the characters, not just one over the other, um... It makes the the level of bullying and meanness is actually explained in this new series, the Cobra Kai series. So you yeah. kind of get a little bit more reference yeah. to yeah. why he's behaving the way he's behaving. And I think I come to appreciate the villainy yeah. more yeah. because of that. Um, I think overall it's just a fun like summer hit movie to enjoy mm -hmm. because it's based around, you know, going out on dates at, you know, putt putt and going to the beach and, you know, all the outdoor activities. There's very rarely anything that they do indoors in this movie. It's all outdoor stuff, enjoying the summer sun in the California land. Oh yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the origin of where Miyagi learns it all is in the second movie. So if you're in, and they reference a lot of that in the second season or third season, I yeah, think. Yeah, they do. Uh, so, I mean, it's really just a continuation and a great, they've really just built everything around these core movies. And if you haven't seen them, you're not getting the full experience of no. the new series. Yes. That's right. So, um, I, I think everything you said, Lindsay, is spot on. 100%. Yeah. I, I, I get it. It was, a, it was definitely a, one of those great summer films for 1985 when it came out. And, um, for for me, I, I I feel that I definitely do resonate with the storyline, uh, probably more than most, and I yeah. get that, I yeah. understand that, and the soundtrack is great. You know, there's definitely that '80s mm -hmm. vibe soundtrack in there, Love but it. the hero for me is not Daniel. The hero is Mr. Miyagi. 
Yeah. And uh, the reason I, I don't know how to explain it, but Pat, the, the, the actor that played Mr. Miyagi, had this demeanor and composure about this character, knowing going into this role, that there is a level of calmness, of, of humility and posterity, that when you can control oneself, you can control your outward actions and emotions. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if you, if you, will, if you just listen and watch the ways of Miyagi-Do, yeah. you, you can literally become a, a better person just by, by the wisdom of Mr. Miyagi himself. And then, I mean, yeah, yes, this is a movie. We're talking about a movie here. But the life applications of what he teaches, literally, whether boy, girl, whatever you're, wherever you're from, they apply to everybody. And there's such simple lessons. I mean, he, if you think about the overall of the movie, there's, his lines are not very long. No. He doesn't speak a lot in the entirety of the movie, if you think about it. It's really just what he says is extremely to the point and powerful. There's no fluff. Yeah. It's to the core of what he wants you to know. Yeah. And the rest of it, because, I mean, daniel he you talk too much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you dance around and talk too much. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's true. I mean, they, they fill in the story around him, but he, he really is the root of the, all the lessons that he needs to learn. And they're very simple, but also very difficult to execute if yeah. you don't know yourself. That's so well, cool. And every line exudes this ridiculous, uh, ridiculous amount of wisdom that you don't often get from a character like a lot of movies. Try these, you know, old. Uh, they're very smart. They know. They know a lot of things. Yeah. They've been there. Grasshopper. But this character, Mr. Miyagi, is one of a kind because his presence is not only felt in that first film and all the sequels. His presence is felt heavily. In Cobra Kai, heavily, and he's—I yeah. mean, obviously, he's not in Cobra Kai, yeah, uh, no. and not just namesake, just everything that he's passed down to everyone, even the characters that were kind of the villainous characters. Everyone knew who Mr. Miyagi was, oh, and I thought yeah. Joe brought up a really good point in saying kind of what he has said just in this movie alone has really been passed down through the ages, and it's really nice yeah. to see that in Cobra Kai. So again, when a movie can start a whole franchise and still go what 40 years later that's when you know you got a good movie on your hands and devereaux watson over in the chat room makes a very good comparison here he says yoda was very similar limited in wording yes. but very powerful in mm -hmm. actions exactly. agree and so you know uh, I, that's awesome when you can have a character that is the wise shaman Mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, that, that speaks it. less but does things that are powerful to impact the entire timeline. Yeah, yeah you've got a character there that's just Yoda-esque. I can't mm -hmm. help but think that maybe even Miyagi was maybe even patterned after Yoda in some ways. I, I'm not yeah, saying right. hypothetically, but now that you mention that, Dev, it, it actually makes sense to some mm -hmm. extent. I so but, um, I have a question for yeah. you boys because I know that we've been kind of accolade, accolade. Is there any negative parts that you found of this movie? Because no movie is perfect, no matter how no. good it is. Just one piece that you wish maybe would have been better. Well, hmm. I, I will say I think the, the the beginning was a little bit slower than I remembered, and you know there are some elements that can come across as maybe too cheesy in my opinion, um, something that's maybe looked upon a bit more harshly nowadays than the 80s, obviously. Um, but there were times where I'm like, ah, oh, that's really cheesy. But at the same time, I look at those things and I'm like, that's kind yeah. of what makes the movie special. So it doesn't really bother me that much. But really, it's the pacing in the first act. That's my yeah. main complaint. It does take a little bit of time getting, getting going, but we are understanding the heart behind Daniel and his mother. And... Um, I think that it's slow, but I think it's necessary mm -hmm. to understand because coming, leaving everything that you know and have in Jersey and picking up your entire life and moving out west uh, is is not an easy task mm -hmm. by any means. So, yeah. but uh, let's let's rate the film, and we'll move on to some Loki discussions. Um, I am going to go with a nine point zero on yeah. this one, just because. For me, it's right up there. If you've been on my litter box, you know the Karate Kid is is front and center in the top ten for sure. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go an eight point two uh, for my score. Again, a couple of pacing things aside, I do think this is one of the better 
franchises of the 80s. I think this is one of the better mm -hmm. um, movies that spawn things to come that still resonate to this day. And uh, The Karate Kid, man, this was an awesome, awesome, good, good choice. Good Thank movie you. to revisit yeah. this week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with a 9.2. Look at you, Badger. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. I love it. It's so good when we have these retro movies and we can be able to talk about this and just, yeah. you know, pick it apart. But at the same time, Sharon, why is this movie so popular in pop culture yes. history? Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing about The Karate Kid is it, it I love, definitely I love resonates. How we're doing these retro rewinds also because of there's this big, huge reboot of mm -hmm. these retro movies and into series mm -hmm. or, or movies themselves. And so we have an opportunity to compare. Yes. The old Versus the new we got as a, well. We got a 10 from John Poffenbarger. 9 out of 10 from I Talk Marvel. Deborah Watson gave it a 10 out of 10. Nice. Look Love at that. it. That's awesome. Well, with all that said and done, we are going to transition into Loki. And we have got, oh my gosh, some crazy stuff to unpack. Wow. But before we do, Spoilers. we have to roll the spoiler alert warning. Now, if you've not seen Loki Episode 1 on Disney+, Plus, I do encourage you, if you're listening on audio or watching right now on the stream... Hit the pause button because we're mm -hmm. going to unpack things that you probably don't want spoiled uh, for yourself. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Danger, danger. You are about to enter a pop -up, pop up spoiler alert. Beyond this point, there is no return. You have been warned. You have been warned. And I believe that the TVA just got a notification as well. <laughs> that uh, we're about to create an alternate timeline by exposing who they are. So here we go. Uh, Loki premiered this Friday. Oh, no, this Wednesday. Excuse me. Loki yeah. Wednesdays, uh, which was different. It was weird watching a, a Disney Plus show because I'm so used to Friday nights. But, uh, man, what a crazy, crazy first episode dare I even say even more stranger and appealing than WandaVision? You are correct. Uh, yeah. I think. yeah. There is a lot to see. There's a lot to digest. There is a lot to process and a lot of things going on in the background mm. of this first episode. We are even, it's, it may be just over 50 minutes in length and runtime, but holy cow. Um, I was there. I caught myself on the second rewatch having to pause and look in the back of things and, and like, well, what does that symbol look like? And I'm trying to, you know, I caught myself doing a WandaVision take on everything. Like, what does that mean? Is that, is that an, <laughs> is that an illusion? Is that Stan Lee in the background on that mural? What's going on here? You know, I'm sitting here dissecting this thing like crazy, but, uh, all in all, man, I'm telling you this, this was a, this one was a good one. Uh, one of the one of the strongest openings of I believe the Marvel franchise. Uh, WandaVision took a little while to get off because in episodes one and two of WandaVision, they were still in the 40s and 50s, and we didn't necessarily understand what was going on right off the bat. So going into episode three on WandaVision, we were kind of clueless, right? Yeah, WandaVision this one, was a slow burn. Kind it was of a start. slow it was a slow burn, but my God, by the time we got there, holy cow! Whew. Yes, it was um, great. I feel this one, man, it's just like, I hope it keeps this momentum throughout the entire series. This is no slow burn. This is like plop, and this is like throwing you right in the middle of the storyline. Multiple, multiple realities and multiverses going on because uh, our boy picked up a Tesseract and created an alternate branch reality, which is going to probably cause a Nexus event. Um, but um, Austin, I'm going to shut up for a minute. I just want to hear you and Lindsay. What do you? What, what did you think about this? Well, I hate this right now. You know why? Because <laughs> I watched episodes one and two about two weeks ago, um, and I can't talk about two yet. And having to wait for episode three, I'm dying. I'm oh, dying. Gosh. This show's amazing. It's spectacular. <laughs> and spoilers, um, season or episode two is better than episode one. But episode one is an incredible start. I think it's the best premiere Disney has had with one of the Marvel shows. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps that momentum throughout the entire episode. Now, one of the criticisms, because I watched this later in the day when all the critics got our screeners, so I saw some tweets right before I started episode one, and I saw you know some people were saying, well, you know, episode one's just kind of an exposition dump, and it turned out that was minority, by the way. But yes. they were like, it's just an exposition dump, and Loki's just really you know learning, seeing things that we've seen as an audience before. But for me, me watching this, I'm seeing 
this through the perspective of a man who is literally seeing his alternate life play out and then watching oh. himself die. And that is one of the biggest emotional gut punches I've seen for any character in the MCU. But the fact that we already know Loki so well and we love him and then remembering that this is the 2012 version, a version who has this grand plan, just got smashed around by the Hulk. We have to remember, he just got whipped around and beaten up yeah. by the Hulk. Yeah. So when he says at the end of the episode, I've had a long day, the guy's had a really long day. And then he sees himself die. Wow. And meeting Owen Wilson for the first time with that chemistry and Owen Wilson slowly Mobius becoming one of my favorite characters in these Marvel series. Man, wow. this show is wow. 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 Uh, when he says that, by the way, I'm going to lose my mind. I know, me too. I, he, you know he's going to say it. You know he's going to say it. But man, he this better. show is rocking it. Right? It is, I mean, it is rocking it. It is rocking it. And man, I'm so glad you touched on that Loki death scene. Um, I was sitting here, dude, and it was so powerful because in that moment, I did realize that, oh, oh my God, this is the 2012 Loki. He yes. has no idea what's happened the past eight years of, of his life. He actually grown to love his father and his brother and join forces with the Avengers and fight mm -hmm. Thanos. And, and, it's just, it, and all of that is gone on the, on the current time continuum as we know it. And he's watching that, and the moment that Thanos snaps his neck on this highlight reel, I was just like, and he, you could just see, he's like, oh my gosh, it was a weight. Tom Hiddleston is a freaking beast in this show. And did he, he got freaking ripped on this too. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah, he did. Holy cow, when that whole good, scene, uh, it, it kind of reminded me in Ragnarok. Remember when Ragnarok, when Thor uh, got, before he went into the gladiator arena, he went through that whole process of becoming a gladiator, gladiator yes. and Stan Lee came out, was gutting his hair. This is just a little off the top and <laughs> don't, don't move or anything. Well, that robot with the weird smiley face, kind of reminded me of that Stan Lee character a little bit because he had all those things coming out of him yeah. that kind of looked like Stan's hands, you know? But it was really interesting watching that whole transition, how he goes from from that, from, from being in 2012, yeah. through the TVA, no clothes, in a jumpsuit, boom, and he's right there in front of the judge getting ready to, to plead for his life. Pretty, pretty amazing. Lindsay, what do you what what was your take takes on oh, this? Oh my goodness. Okay, so just to, to start back at the beginning of the Disney Plus series Marvel phenomenon that we're experiencing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. WandaVision was swarmed with fan base speculation. Are they gonna oh, yeah. do this? Are they gonna do that? Easter eggs. I think every frame of every second in every episode of that movie had an Easter egg shoved in it somewhere <laughs> and somebody found like five <laughs> to speculate on and all of it led to Mephesto, right? Yeah. So there was that series. Phenomenal phenomenal end. Can't wait to see it tying back into everything else. And then we had Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We kinda that was kind of a predictable one. We kinda already knew where the story was gonna lead and there was a couple of things there that we probably maybe not predicted, but for the most part, it went the way we thought it was going to. Loki, I have no idea where this is going to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. None whatsoever. I am completely clueless about what's going to happen next. Um, I just know Loki is being the, the bad guy, yeah. right? With some somewhat good qualities when he feels like it. Yeah. So um, this is definitely, a, I'm buckled in, I'm ready for the ride, I'm ready for anything to happen at any time in this show. It's going to be a very exciting adventure. Um, I loved Miss Minute. I yes, know it's a very, yeah. kind of an yes. obscure moment from the episode, but it's actually kind of a really key moment in the episode. It is explaining the goal of yeah. the series and where yeah. it's tying into all of this. Yeah. We already know that we're doing the 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 multiverse of madness situation and we've already had references to the Nexus before in, in WandaVision and whatnot. This is explaining how it's tying into everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was really thankful. And plus I'm all about that whole retro atomic art style anyways. <laughs> yeah. So that yes. was like giving me all the good feels. Um, and then we we get our lovely Owen Wilson intro. Wow. <laughs> wow. I loved wow. him. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know I was going to love him as much as I do love him playing this character. It feels kind of like a, 
catch me if you can hand ratty chase the guy yes. you know catch you know sort of sort of situation yes. going on i'm loving that that movie is like one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time so having that feel woven into this series i'm like all right i'm on board let's go this well, is gonna be great it's funny you said that, Lindsay. That's what? one of the movies that the writer said that he that right? uh, looked at when he was writing this <sighs> series was Catch Me If You Can. I love really? Tom Hanks. I yes. love Tom Hanks, and that's definitely a, a, one yes. of my favorite characters he plays. So yeah. um, I'm definitely getting really good vibes of uh, Owen Wilson playing that role. Um, obviously, he's not going to be exactly like that, but with the, the atomic stylings of the Miss yeah. Minute video, and then you pull this hand ratty mm -hmm. vibe character from that same similar time era, I'm like, oh my god, my heart. And then we've got all of this references, and I know we'll dive into more of the Easter eggs here in a minute, but all of the little notes and, yeah. and little things. So we have this fan, you know, it's an Easter egg hunt for the yeah. fan base it is total fan service and i'm loving all of it mm -hmm. um i am really looking forward to all of the episodes not just the next one yeah, yeah i know and, and, and you know Lindsay, my gosh yeah absolutely catch me if you can i mean yeah. that's a great pull that is a great pull for this and yeah. there's so many little things and easter eggs and things and i was you know you're going back to and talking about the mrs minutes and stuff like that it kind of reminded me of Dino DNA from Jurassic <laughs> Park, you know, that style. Yeah. I, I loved the process, the processing. Yeah. You know, obviously he was he was imprisoned, so yeah. he's going through this new new yeah. prisoner recruitment, or not recruitment, but processing system where it's an elevator, and yeah. each floor is a certain step, and he's yeah. like having to do all this thing. I loved the sign here if this is everything you've ever said in your entire life and then he was like are you serious and it prints out a paper and he's like end this yeah and he's like for reals prints out end this and i'm like oh my i kind of feel though so loki is what a brilliant. thousand years old so oh, yeah brilliant. so there should have been a lot more paper there i think i think it, yeah. i agree but also you were going to say something though you had your hand up there for a second that is what <clears throat> one thing i said my and in, in my first review is it it has the same sense of humor as thor ragnarok like yes. in ragnarok when thor is going through um come with me mm -hmm. and he's learning all of those things on that little roller coaster thing <laughs> and then the melt stick in ragnarok well you yeah. got a similar thing here with the baton that that evaporates that guy and loki's like for the first time we see loki terrified right yes. but we were laughing so it really has that ragnarok sense of humor, humor yeah which is perfect so for loki so man i mean they've got everything going for them in this show michelle look at this entertainment what examiner over here whatever number. you do take a number michelle alexander this chat is blowing <laughs> it up there was I'm a telling one you. earlier that was uh, something about this podcast is but it's gone now getting back to like <laughs> the the, the, the cusp of uh, of just the oh, just the setup and the Easter eggs in the background. So the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, um, makes its yeah. its triumphant appearance into the MCU. Mm -hmm. Have we seen them before? Not until now. No, no okay. not until now. And I have a feeling that they're going to be a definitely heavy players uh, going into the future, especially going into uh, Quantum uh, Mania with the Ant Man. As, oh, yeah. as Kang is is already been teased as the villain there, Kang is part. He is kind of like the bounty man for the time, the time to the TVA time variance authority, and um, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, has a thing with the judge uh, that was judging uh, Loki when he went up to the altar, the, like the yeah. the big wooden thing with the three faces. Kang, if you don't know, they work together. With Kang, mm. and if you don't know who mm. Kang is, just he's a big bad dude. He's he's kind of a and he's coming in Quantum Mania, so get ready for that. It's already the Mephisto of this show. Everyone is saying Kang's got to come. Kang's yeah. got to come. But you know what? I think it's way more of a possibility than Mephisto because it ties right into these characters. <laughs> well, it has to because Quantum Mania, Kang has already been confirmed. Exactly. We know and the that. actor and the actor Jonathan Majors. Oh my God, he's going to be so cool. Yeah, oh my, it's going to be crazy. So. I was just I was just thinking which characters have previously been referenced. I know we've ref we know about the Watchers, right? Mm -hmm. The Watchers, and they talk about seen. those. He he refers to them as the Time Lizards, which I found highly <laughs> hilarious. Um, uh, there's not many other characters now, the, in the, the TVA, series that the, we've met. Now the TVA, the three guys that are on the back, the Time Variants, the the gods of time. 
mm-hmm. are not the watchers. Oh, yes. they're not the watchers. They're the watchers people. are are beings who simply observe everything from afar. They never interfere with the human I existence. They were the same thing. Which no. is what Stan Lee was in that movie, right. essentially saying that's why he cameos in all of the films. Because he's so. a watcher. He Doesn't never interferes with the timeline. Yes, right. but, he's, but he's always there watching. <laughs> I love it. Uh, which is great. Um, but the Easter eggs. Now, anybody notice the scroll in the background wearing yes. the Adidas sweatpants? Yes. Well, I didn't notice the sweatpants, <laughs> but I did notice the scroll. Go back and yes. watch your Captain Marvel. He's Hilarious. in Captain Marvel. Yes. Isn't so there is a direct tie-in with the scrolls and that character Perfect. from Captain Marvel who's making his background appearance cameos. The continuity. Now let's talk about the drawer of the Infinity Stones. Yeah, that kind of so blew great. my lid, guys. Well, we just use some of those for paperweights because they don't have power in magic and function. That's crazy. In that realm of the TVA. That's well, can you? I can't wrap my head around that. It's also crazy because we just saw Thanos wipe out half of the universe with these Infinity Stones, and these guys are using it as paperweight. Yeah. And that's when Loki. That's when Loki kind of just dropped almost metaphorically like dropped to his knees and said these are the most powerful i mean yeah what's what's above this i mean you go straight to heaven above this what do you do the eternals are the only thing above the tva and, i mean what do you do man it's it's insane how they established them using that as paperweights as just some of the best power in the I universe i wonder i Love. wonder if the tva gods the three like lizard beings no. i wonder if they are eternals Oh my God! If oh, if they try that, in, I want to. Okay. Well, anyway, explode. getting back. All right. So, I'm explode. Um, yeah, I, I, my head's already. I'm, I'm like sitting how, like. How trying did to you process. guys like the the little office clerk guy? What was his name? Oh, the guy with the cat. Yeah. Like I you, told, you first see him as as he's coming in. It's kind of like the reception. Oh, you're talking about guy. the you're talking about the and other guy. And then you guy. later see him. He's pushing the cart with all the the Infinity Stones in it and all that. The junk drawer. The junk I told cart. Madison that would be me because they literally evaporate that thing. He's like, guys, you almost evaporated me. Like <laughs> I would be that awkward, <laughs> just nerdy dude who's been there his entire life. That would 100 percent be me. And that, that mm. that's another good point. These beings in the TVA have been born, bred, and exist yeah. only here. Yeah. It was yeah. in the TV. You saw TVA. how big it is whenever they're out walking. Um, it's insane. Owen Wilson it's and, and Loki, are, they're both. It looks like Star Wars. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks, just, yeah, it looks like Coruscant on crack is what it looks yeah. like. <laughs> I'm like, when I mean, can I move there? <laughs> how much is rent a month because I want to go? It was, uh, and when Loki uh, looked at the uh, vastness, he's like, this is an illusion. This can't yeah. be real. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. And this is fake. Yeah, it, real? it's it's real. It's real. Um, but the drawer of Infinity Stones, I, my mind is like sitting here racing what beings in previous history got these stones and were captured by the TVA. Because basically all that is is just a prisoner mm-hmm. recon for, for all the things and artifacts that these the guys that they bring in have. And... What's even more fascinating is they didn't capture Steve Rogers. Yes. Because well, Steve Rogers say. was in the continuity. It was meant to happen the way it was meant <laughs> to right. happen. Steve and Peggy meant to happen. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But I want to know yeah. about, I want to know the backstory, uh, even the baseball card. You know, the Honus Wagger baseball card is worth mm. millions of dollars. Uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room, D.B. Cooper. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you that. don't know who D.B. Cooper is, it's one of the biggest airplane heists of the 30s or 40s. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know who D.B. Cooper is, you probably want to go back to school and hit your books again because I'm going to be honest with you. This is one, one of the biggest villains in the world, an unsolved mystery. We don't even know who this guy ever was, but he stole yeah. millions of dollars from the federal government by hijacking a, a, a plane. This was a real thing. This yes. really happened. And the fact that Loki was Timmy Cooper <laughs> all along. Um, it was it was almost as interesting. You remember in Days of Future Past when they made it to where Magneto killed. Was it Magneto saved or Magneto killed JFK? Regardless, um, you're ch- you're changing history in this yeah. universe to make it fit your narrative, and that's exactly right. what they're doing with Loki. And it's brilliant. It the is. writing yeah. is so good. I loved it so much. It's it's just I, I I can't wait for multiverse of madness, because oh, the same guy that's writing this is writing that, and it's just oh, oh yay, 
Oh. And he he wrote Rick and Morty. He wrote Rick and Morty. So that of course like, he wrote Rick and Morty. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He's he's such a good writer. Like he oh, weaves man. humor and this serious because Rick and Morty can get serious. And he's applying that to Marvel, and it's a whole new ball game. This is an entirely new ball game that we're playing well, in right now. In the, the big MCU. buzz on the internet right now, and we got a few more things that want to wrap up on Loki, but the Agent Carter quote unquote cameo. Oh wow! Um, yeah, that's been we don't several know. Times we can't chat, confirm sure. or deny what that is, but I want to be honest with you. There's not a lot of characters with that body style and hairdo mm-hmm. that's going to look like it. And I, the bigger question here is, if it is, why? Why and what what timeline did she come from? Yeah, is where's she, she like at? Old school or is she? Like I mean, newer? is is this is this was she married to Steve at this point? What's happening? Is this before Steve? I mean, uh, d- Maybe it's a scroll that looks does, like her. Does is there a measure of time in the TVA? Did they even mention that? They said time moves differently, differently. in the TVA, but it they didn't say, say how exactly. Yeah. They didn't specify how it moved. It just said it moved differently. Okay. Um, and also, what was um, I don't remember Owen Wilson's character's name is Mobius. Is Mobius. That Mobius, Mobius and Mobius. Yeah. Uh, I keep wanting to say Morbius. What, what was he? <laughs> what was that case he was originally working on before he came to deal with Loki? It was Loki. No, like he was in like some church with some Loki weird, crazy. No. Yeah, because the kid pointed up at the stained glass window, and the the, the guy with the horns. It's Loki. Oh. So every Dude, case that he's a different ex- character. Here, you didn't catch it at the beginning of it. And when, Austin's like grinning like a Cheshire cat down here because he knows crap that we don't. I when Loki that. got the Tesseract, <laughs> listen, when Loki got the Tesseract, yeah, he created multiple realities. So okay. that Loki went to 1549 to terrorize mm-hmm. that town in 1890 okay. whatever in in what was it How Oklahoma did I miss that connection I was well, just like well what's the this hooded figure I believe is going to be a female Loki or even another variation what? of Loki um and so here's what the thing is the whole thing is going to be Loki in well, multiple okay ways that. and formats Austin's turning away <laughs> Face oh. cannot confirm or deny this storyline speculation. Well, I'm I'm just saying this because the <laughs> Austin, just turn around, just turn 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 around, keep on turning, just keep on turning. All right, so <laughs> the mouse is watching. no, but listen, the boy pointed at the stained glass window with the horned devil. Yes, Loki is the horned devil of mischievousness. Okay. I thought and it was like some other bad guy that we were going to be meeting <laughs> later or something. I thought Austin. that maybe Mobius had like left in the middle of his whatever current case he was working on to go <laughs> deal with Loki and he was going to come back to it no, later or no, something. No, Loki. Okay. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know, but I'm liking it. <laughs> Austin. <laughs> He's looking through the people. Help me. He's looking through the back part. <laughs> Oh say my anything. Gosh. I can't say anything because I know and I can't say it. It hurts. It's okay. We'll, no, we'll don't, know soon enough. Don't say no, anything, Austin. Don't hurt yourself. But we will see how right or wrong I am. But okay. yes, um, what Mobius was inspecting in the church was another Loki doing a different thing. What was happened at the end of it when the fire in the field, that's another Loki. Oh, good Lord. So when he created, when he, when he grabbed the Tesseract, multiple branches that's why they went over the nexus he created a conundrum in the in the continuation timeline uh so you guys are gonna have to handhold me through all these oh we got you girl we ain't gonna let you go we ain't gonna let you go um Um, one last thing two more things i want to talk about is if if you looked this is really interesting on the elevator all right if you looked at the numbers you're like what do these mean these are number sequences yeah they were really random one i picked out I U L on the left side. Go back and screenshot mm-hmm. it. If Mike was here tonight, he's out of town. He can't. Um, I U L refers to the zombie Marvel timeline, when all of the heroes and oh. villains of of Marvel oh. are zombies, the living dead. Oh my God! Just do your research. But that is that is the world. So six one six is the current continuation of of Earth as we know yeah. it, right? As we saw the real end, um, you know, when he's watching his life in, in the viewing room and the mm-hmm. tape ends and you get that white segment, pause it. It says Loki 616 on it. 
There's another one for you, which confirms this is the Loki of Earth and the current continuation of right. Earth. Um, but IUL specifically is another one of those alternate timelines that refers to the zombie apocalypse of Marvel. Uh, let's see, and the last but not least is the conversation when Mobius and Loki are walking through the corridor with the big, vast seat in the background. He says, this is all an illusion. And he's like, this is a thing of my nightmares. Mobius looks at him and says, well, that's another floor and another room, but you could take that out any time you want to. Um, that was an interesting nugget. That is interesting. Nightmares. Referring and to nightmare. Yeah. Um, and it's it's funny. I know we mentioned before that it's funny that this is the show that they mentioned Nightmare in and not WandaVision, but that also, I mean, every time they mention something, it's going to open a door. Um, but imagine actually uh, eventually getting Nightmare in the MCU. And, yeah. I, and I think this I'd is I'd be happy with Kang at this point. Oh, my God. You know, oh my God. I'm, just, I'm just on board with Kang. Give me some Kang. Yeah. We know he's coming. Uh, just mm-hmm. drop him in here right quick like they did with Thanos in and, and the yeah. early MCU, you know. Yeah. But, um, hey, you know, that's just a snippet of some of the things that we saw. There's things on the wall in the TVA. There's, there, there's so banners. many different things. Number sequences that probably actually mean something that we haven't discovered we yet. We haven't figured there's out. There's all yeah. sorts of things. Colors, pictures, numbers, shapes. And Loki's, you, you know, Loki's sex is fluid. Oh, mm-hmm. Lord. Yes, yes. Now, let me explain that. In the comics... Loki can be reincarnated in multiple states and multiple bodies, which means he can be a female, he can be a male, he can be a scroll, he can be anything he wants to be because he's a god. Mm-hmm. So his sex is non, he's, he's asexual in a way. He's fluid. Mm-hmm. So Loki is more, think of this, we see Loki as a masculine presence because that's what we've seen Tom Hiddleston's character. Correct. I believe why the reason they hinted on that and in, in, in the closing credits i believe that we're going to see variations of loki we didn't even know existed in multiple formats in this series and that's why they highlighted that on fluid so wow that was that was wow. a lot i'm wow. exhausted now i'm ready for bed there was one other thing i wanted to ask about you guys sure. did you notice that um loki's last name when they announced him was not odinson it was it was yes, it was the uh, yes. yes from the that was what? just a little nugget. I was like, oh, not well, frost giant the nugget. frost yeah. giant's right. return. That's right. Uh, she even said the, the frost giant, didn't she? She said that uh, so. frost di- uh, then then she said Laufey's son, which I thought was a great. I mean, you know, again, I, I'm looking at this writer, um, Michael Waldron. And then I think of Marcus and McFeely, who were the writers behind Winter Soldier, Civil, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. Their first project being Winter Soldier, I have the same feeling about Michael Waldron, meaning I believe his presence from here on out is going to be the major presence in the MCU. Mm. So not only we're going to get uh, Loki and Doctor Strange, I think he's going to go on to write a big portion of the MCU because the key word here is time. And I think that's what these next few phases are dealing with is time. And I think Michael Waldron is going to be a huge part of most of these screenplays man i'm telling you this has been such a fun show unpacking just one episode (laughs) one episode one (laughs) and and by the time we come back we'll be unpacking two more episodes yeah so i mean it's only eight is it eight is it a series of eight i believe is it a series six. of eight? Why do they have six. to be so short? Why does that be so short? It stinks. I want oh, okay. That's painful. And then that'll lead us six. right up. Uh, well, after, well, no, I guess Loki will be going on right there in the middle of Black Widow. Black Widow. Yeah. 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 Wow. Interesting. So we have two more days to wait until episode two. So that's not too that's bad. That's not too bad, no. Yeah. No, it'll be here before we know it. But, uh, exactly. guys, that's it. Uh, if we miss something, please let us know in the chat. I'm sure we'll find out a uh, hundred more sh- things to talk about. I'm sure, about but these are just some of the nuggets more days. we were able to unpack in this in this short amount of time. And, uh, I, guys, I love your comments over the chat. Thank you guys I so much. I told you we for, could talk all night about just one I'm episode you, of Loki. It's amazing. And I can, there's more. I can even, I can even oh. go into detail of the murals and stuff in the background and things I saw. But... It doesn't really, it's not tangible until it becomes tangible, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, but uh, anything, anyway, 
Man, I am. Uh, Just I'm, hit us up on the socials if you guys want to chitty chat about all. Yeah, this. let me know what you guys think about it. I want to hear your reviews Morning as well. Stretch. We're not going to review the series at this point. Where we'll wait until the final episode airs and we'll review the series as a whole. But uh, with all that said, Austin Burke, you ready to take us out, my friend? Yes, you guys can find me at the Burkinator uh, and Austin Burke on YouTube. You guys can um, follow us uh, on at the creative multiverse which is the newly formed creative group for more great media content artwork and more you can find us on facebook twitter and instagram at the creative multiverse and you guys joe and Lindsay, you guys are doing really incredible things over there so if you guys want an outlet or just uh, a place you can go to express yourselves i think that's one of the best places especially on facebook um so if you're creative produce content or have a talent we want to see it and would like for you guys to share it with us in the, wait for it, multiverse. Oh, multiverse. maybe that was intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, and the whole reason why we uh, Joe went with the multiverse is because it's not limited to just art. You can be a singer. You can be a, a, a video producer. You can be a yeah. photographer. You can do anything that is a talent that falls under the umbrella of creativity yeah. is Love welcome it. there. Indeed. All mediums. We, we are inclusive of all mediums. Yes, we Anywho, are. So it's a, it's a fun place to hang out. There's good peeps there. All right. So um, I'm Lindsay Badger. You can find me LR Badger all over the social media. If you want to find out my art is Badger Makes is the handle there as well. Um, you can find Pop X on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter at the handle at Pop X Cast. And you can send any comments and suggestions to us via email at popxcast at gmail.com. And also for all the future shows and past shows, make sure you go to our official website, www.popxcast.com. Indeed. And I am Joseph Burke at Joseph Burke Arts all over social media. Of course. Hats off to Team Pop X this week. Mike Ippolito, we missed you in the window. Yes, we did. But good luck on helping your mother move down here to Orlando. I'm so excited for her and her next chapter. That's awesome. And I'm so glad that you left Atlanta to come down here and be with your mom. That's awesome. So good stuff there. And that's it for this episode of Pop X Cast. My gosh, what an episode it was. And we'll mm -hmm. see you next time on number 125 as we unpack Sweet Tooth and John Ooh. Hughes. The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just finished Sweet Tooth this week. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's gonna be another what fun a show episode coming up oh. next time. You guys gotta make sure you tune in. What a show! I mean, Sweet yeah. Tooth is amazing. I mean, I was just I could not I can't talk enough about it. It's just just yeah. say it. It's like it's like the never ending so story good. meets some kind of like dark Nazi tale yeah. of, of weirdness. <laughs> it's crazy. So but having said that, <laughs> speaking of dancing, speaking of dancing, you can dance if you I want. I believe, I believe it's time. Okay. Bye, Pop Xers. Have a good week. See you in two. Sorry, Austin. I gotta cut it, bro. I gotta cut it. From everyone at Pop X Cast. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification bell so you know when we go live next. Drop us an email, popxcast at gmail.com. Throw us up a like on Instagram and all those other social media outlets. At Pop X Cast. Until next time.
can't make this up. We love you. We love you, Pop X. We'll see you in two weeks. Oh my gosh. I'm officially done. I, I... Goodbye, Austin.